Hello, I am Jumika, and today we're going to be building the slime farm behind me. Uh, if you are interested in more tutorials or just watching a Let's Play SMP, uh, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video by searching for a slime farm tutorial, hit that like button to let YouTube or Google or whoever know that they did a good job in helping you find this video. Uh, this farm in particular gets over 1,800 slime balls per hour. Um, yeah, if you want to see one in the real world, like on a multiplayer server that I play on, uh, the server is called Broke Rock, and I'll link to the episode where you can see me build it and see it in action, and yeah, I'll leave that there. If you'd like your own hosting uh, for a multiplayer server, be sure to check out my website, servers.jomica.co. That link is also in the description. You can get uh, the server there for pretty cheap, and I run it myself, so you can always talk to me, and yeah, I'll help you out with that. So yeah, for this farm, uh, the supplies you're gonna need are all in here. You need two minecart with hoppers, two repeaters, two comparators, two hoppers, four chests, two redstone torches. You're also gonna need some magma blocks, glowstone or um, sea lanterns. You could also use jack-o'-lanterns. They're a little bit harder to place. Uh, you'll also need some snow blocks and jack-o'-lanterns for the snow golems that are in the walls there. Um, I think you can just use carved pumpkins as well. And then you're gonna need some cobblestone walls. These are the actual numbers you'll need in here. Um, but yeah, let's not waste any more time and we'll go ahead and get into the building of this farm. So the first thing you wanna do in building a slime farm is actually find a slime chunk. Um, what I usually use if I'm not doing it like the old fashioned way without any help uh, is I use chunkbase.com. So if you come, if you just go to chunkbase and then go to apps, uh, there's the slime chunk here and it'll pop up um, where all the slime chunks are in your world. Uh, all slime chunks are the same across all worlds. So if we leave this empty and hit find slimes, uh, the seed will change here. So it keeps changing, um, but the slime chunks are staying exactly the same. Uh, make sure down here you select Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I think Java Edition and Bedrock have different slime chunk algorithms. Um, I'm not exactly sure the difference is, but we're doing Bedrock, so make sure you select Bedrock. And yeah, I usually, when I do it, I find a couple slime chunks next to each other. Like this would be a good one if you're doing um, a double slime chunk. If you want to try a triple, this could be a good one. You may run into some issues with these two chunks nearby. Um, but for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and use this slime chunk. And that's specifically because there's no other chunks nearby. We could kind of set up our AFK area here. And then we'll activate the farm. And we won't be activating any other slime chunk areas. Because if slimes are spawning, let's say you did this one and your AFK is like here, you're activating all of these slime chunks here. So if there's caves that aren't lit up, or even if they are lit up, um, if they're not filled in, slimes are gonna start spawning in here and then it's gonna affect the spawn rates of your farm. So you either wanna fill in um, caves so slimes don't spawn in other chunks or just try to find one that's kind of by itself. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a world and we're gonna come back to this slime chunk right here and get started. And actually, before we go into the world, the important thing here is these numbers down in this bottom right corner. Um, if you look and we select this, actually, I wanted to do, well, it doesn't matter. Um, but the bottom right there, it says from negative 48 slash negative 46 to negative 33 slash negative 43. So the first two numbers, the negative 48 and negative 64 is the X and the second two is the Z. Um, so basically you wanna find the corner negative 48 
and negative 64, and then go to the other corner, negative 33, negative 49. And that will be your chunk square um, that you want to start actually digging out. So I have one already selected. It's somewhere around zero, zero. Um, but we'll just go ahead and go into the world and we'll start to dig that one out. All right, we are in the world. I have marked out the chunk that we are gonna be building or digging out. Um, it is 16 by 16, all chunks are 16 by 16. And we're gonna be digging out everything, including these little pillars, and then also three uh, extra spaces on the outside. So slimes will be able to spawn inside this area, right in here all the way over that direction and then they're going to want to jump off and they need three spaces to do that so we're going to be building or sorry not building we're going to be digging out three extra spaces on each side all the way down um, so they can just jump off the edges and then fall to your collection area we don't really have to dig out the top here if we start at Y42 or so and then dig all the way down to bedrock, that's where all your platforms are going to be. But if you dig straight from the top all the way down, you're going to get better spawn rates because uh, of sky access. If there's sky access, it doesn't count as a cave. There's some weird magic that happens and the game allows more spawns to s or more slimes to spawn at the top layer. Um, so I'm actually going to dig down straight from the top all the way down to bedrock and I'm going to make this as efficient as I can so you guys can see all the rates and all that stuff. So I'm going to use commands to start digging just because I don't have that many hours to be digging out everything by hand. Um, the important thing with the slime farm is just be prepared to dig for a very long time. So yeah, I'm gonna get this dug out and I'll join you back once we have a big hole. So now that we have the hole dug out, we're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna start building those platforms, uh, basically spawning platforms for the slime. And we're gonna start at Y equals seven. Um, You'll go every three all the way up, and then the top platform will be Y39. So one, two, three. Oh, I forgot. I am in creative. Um, so yeah, this will be six, and then we'll place up here, and then we'll be standing on Y7. So basically two blocks, and you can either use regular smooth stone or smooth stone slabs, basically any slabs or solid block um, just if you do use slabs be aware that in the past spawning has been kind of broken on them and it's come and gone a few times so they'll fix it and then the bug will kind of reappear and then it'll go away and yeah so if you use regular solid blocks you'll probably have a better chance of it always working with every update um, but if you use uh, regular slabs then you'll be saving on resources after digging all this out you should have plenty of blocks to be able to use um, but if you're trying to save blocks go with slabs if you're trying to make it so it doesn't break uh, or has a less chance of breaking in the future I would go with solid blocks um, but today we're gonna go with just slabs just because no real reason um, and yeah so you want to do one platform here and then you want to go one, two, three, and then the fourth one, is that right? Yeah, the fourth one you'll be placing another row. So we're going to go through that, go all the way up to the top, well not top, all the way up to Y39, and then I'll join you back once we have all these in place. All right, I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, but one thing I forgot to mention is you don't need to have the whole perimeter dug out. Um, a good thing to do is actually block off this side and the side opposite to this. 
So this will all be filled in. And you can do that by just not digging it out in the first place. Um, if you do dig it out, you can just put a wall up like this in between each layer. You don't even have to do that one. Um, but what I'm gonna do is actually just fill it in completely all the way to the top. That will basically stop all the slimes from spawning and falling over and we don't have to worry about it. So yeah, that's just a note here um, before you guys start digging out too far. Just dig out three on this side and three on that side and don't worry about the other two sides. All right, we have all the platforms in place and I just sat here for a few seconds and all these slimes have started falling from the top there. Um, one other thing you should probably do is put in blocks underneath this bottom row. Uh, that way no slimes will be going underneath or spawning underneath. And the next thing you want to do, you probably could have done this while you're do placing these uh, panels, um, but you want to put in lighting. Uh, a good source of lighting is jack-o'-lanterns. That is because slime can still spawn on them and yeah, they still give off light. You don't want other mobs spawning up here, uh, taking up the mob cap. You only want slime. So if you put in the jack-o'-lanterns, slimes will still spawn. They can spawn at any level um, below Y39 or Y40. And yeah. What you want to do is place them in. I will go ahead and put in a little design, kind of the most efficient way to do it. And you can copy that or kind of make up your own. I actually changed my mind. I went ahead and went with sea lanterns um, because I didn't think uh, slimes could spawn on sea lanterns. Um, so I did a little test and they can. Sea lanterns are much easier to place uh, then jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns, you can't come in and just place one. You actually have to put a block underneath it to place. So yeah, it'll appear like that, but if I take this away and start clicking, nothing happens. So if you have access to sea lanterns, you can use those. Um, I'll go ahead and test uh, glowstone also. That's sometimes easier to get uh, if you don't have access to sea lanterns. So yeah, jack-o'-lanterns are a possibility. Uh, we could change that out by going like this. Actually, we'll just do glowstone because I don't know what the name is for jack lantern. It's probably pumpkin with some sort of variant. Um, but yeah, as you can see, glowstone also works. You can place that and they'll spawn. Um, so. Yeah, I'm going to make the little design to be the most efficient. If you want to place all these, you can. Um, but that's going to be a big waste of glowstone or sea lanterns. There's a much more efficient way where you can use, I think it's eight uh, sea lanterns or glowstone per level. Instead of, I don't know, 64 per level. So I'll go ahead and get that in place and show you guys what it looks like. And you can use whatever design you want. All right, so here is the design. Uh, first we'll go to the top here, just so it's easier to count. Um, but you really wanna just come from the center here. So these four are the center. You can count from the corners here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is also eight from that corner. Uh, you wanna go out to basically here. Uh, if you wanna pause it right now and take a look, you can kind of see the design that you want to go with. Um, we can also get rid of those. That is just for kind of easier placement. Um, but that is the design you want. Nothing will spawn there other than slime. Um, that'll get light level seven everywhere on the platforms and you should be good with that. So yeah, the next step we want to work on is probably, I don't know. I guess we'll go with the collection system at the bottom. Uh, the other thing we need to do is place in, 
iron golems or snow golems. I like to use snow golems because they're much cheaper. Um, but yeah, we need to place those in. They will attract the slime to the edges here so they fall down much quicker. Uh, but we'll head to the bottom, work on collection system, and get that going. Okay, for the collection system and killing area, we're going to want to place some rails down at the bottom. Um, these guys are going to make it pretty hard. Usually what I do is I just go ahead and lay out all the rails uh, in like regular, regular rails. And then after that, we'll go ahead and replace with golden rails. I actually did that a little bit wrong. I wanted it to go up into this area. So we'll make sure we do that. Um, so this will come this way. This will go around that way. And then this one will go ahead and be the golden rails there. Uh, I did that wrong again. So we'll get rid of that. Place that one there. Place that. There we go. So the minecarts are going to come out here. This will be our collection area. Um, it'll be a minecart unloader. But the minecart will come out collect all the slime balls up top, work its way around, go to the end, and then come back. Um, but in order to do that, we're gonna need a redstone block, or if you can make it fit, you could probably use uh, a lever or something like that. Uh, I just use redstone blocks because they're easiest. And then, yeah, we're gonna need to place a few of these every little bit, so probably here place another one and we'll just do three rails again and then maybe somewhere around here um, like that may be a good idea to actually start with from the bottom and do the collection and everything first and then work your way up just because there's a lot of these guys here but if you want to get the slime while you're going um, you could start with the platforms and then they'll come down you could kill them and they won't be the big huge guys by the time they get down to the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead and test a minecart. And we just want to make sure that this comes out and has enough momentum to go all the way through. Uh, we'll go ahead and place that there. And we'll go like that. So it looks like it is going to have enough momentum to make it all the way across. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is fill this in with magma blocks. Um, I found this to be the easiest way to collect everything and do all that. I've done in the past, uh, I've used cactus and water streams, and that just ends up being a lot of work. Um, you end up saving some supplies, but I think the work involved is much better to be using minecart and magma blocks. Um, you do want to do the same thing on this side. Uh, you could probably have it just go up here and then we will probably just dig out a little area here. That's usually what I do uh, to both sides so you can get to both collection areas uh, easily and then like some sort of water stream elevator for you to get up and down. Um, we're probably just going to leave that there. Uh, that's really up to you how you want to get up and down, but yeah, the next thing is the actual minecart unloader. So we'll go ahead and build that now. I'm going to get the supplies for that, and we can get that built up, and I'll show you how that works. All right, the first thing you want to do for the minecart unloader is place a chest. Uh, we're going to use double chest here. We want the hopper going into that. And then we are going to have um, rails coming around the corner here. And then this guy up top is going to be a powered rail. Next to that hopper, we're going to place a block. We're going to break out some of these just to make things easier. Uh, we're going to place a block here, one above, one below, and one above again. Uh, in this is going to be redstone type things. Actually, I did this wrong. We're going to replace this powered rail with a regular rail and place the powered rail over one. Uh, next thing we need is a comparator, which I did not have. 
So we can go ahead and get that out. And we'll place the comparator in here. Uh, that will read the contents of that hopper. So anytime there's something in the hopper, it'll power that. Uh, next thing we want is a torch right there. So when that's powered, it'll activate this block, turning the torch off. And then we'll place the repeater here. And I can just stay on one tick. So when that's off, that rail will stay off, meaning that hopper minecart will stay. As soon as that's empty, this will turn off. That repeater will turn on. It'll power that rail. And that guy can go out and do his thing. So he's just going to collect some of the slime balls that are out there. We'll wait for him to get back. He's got 41 in there. He's unloading. This will get filled up and then he'll go off again as soon as that is full. Um, we can go ahead and close off this area. We don't actually need to go in there, um, at least not from the outside. So then we'll come down here, go in, and this is all closed off. We can go ahead and place some torches just to light it up. We don't want anything spawning in here. Um, so yeah, you want to do that on both sides, the whole killing system and item collection. We'll go. I'll go ahead and finish that up on this side, get it all done, and then we can come back and try to get these guys off of the platforms as fast as possible. So now we build uh, snow golems so when the slimes see them, they'll hurry over, try to get to them, and then die on the magma blocks. Um, you want to put a row of them all the way up on both sides. So I've already done this side. You can take a look here. This is just kind of the pattern I've found to work best. Uh, if we go to the other side, you want to put it right in the middle. So it's going to be too wide right here. We're going to build, dig out two all the way up. Um, yeah. So too deep, too wide, all the way up to the top there. And then we're going to raise up by one. So we'll put glowstone or some sort of light source in there. That way nothing spawns in with the snow golem. And yeah, they can be lit up and it'll be fine. So we'll go down here, break that again. And we just want to make sure that everything can actually die. So we'll put in two more magma blocks right in there and fence posts. So anything that lands up against here should most likely get picked up um, by the minecarts. It won't always be picked up, but it's not that big of a deal. We need snow blocks and jack-o'-lanterns and fence posts and the glowstone. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then above him, it's going to be every three or fourth block, I guess. So there'll be a three block gap in between. So one, two, three, and then on the fourth, we'll place that. And we're going to do that all the way up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we want to make sure we do that all the way to the top layer. Uh, so it looks like maybe one more. One, two, th three, four. Just make sure we got that right. And yep, that's the top one. So we'll go down to the bottom here again. We're going to go ahead and place in all of our snow. And we actually did pick up that uh, block that was sitting there underneath the fence post. It did not get picked up by the minecarts, but that's not a huge deal for the most part. We are going to pick up everything. Um, so yeah, down here, we'll put fence posts right above here, so there's only a one wide gap, and nothing is going to get in there with him. And we'll go ahead and do that all the way up. I'm purposely leaving a little gap we're going to have to go down underneath uh, one more time after we get the snow golems in. This is, yeah, the slime farms are one of the harder farms. Not hard, 
but it just takes a very long time to get everything set up. Um, and then we'll place in blocks here just to fill in, make sure the snow golems don't escape. I've had that happen in uh, on my broke rock world where I mined through and they got out and they don't really work if they're not in place. Um, so yeah, we'll get this filled in. I was going to put a little cut in, but we'll just go ahead and do this on camera. It's not that much left and it's not too hard. All right, so those guys are all locked in place. Now we can go through and place the pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns on their head. And then we'll go ahead and place the final fence posts. And that should be a farm complete. So there is a little bit more that needs to be done to make sure that this thing stays efficient. Um, one is probably the most important thing is actually going through and lighting up all the caves. Uh, another important thing here is to go along the wall here and fill in any holes that are there because if the slimes jump off like here, they're gonna land here and they can just get lost up in the caves. So make sure you fill these in and yeah, I'm gonna fill these in and then do that on both sides and then we can talk about lighting up the caves and kind of the best way to do that. Okay, so all the walls are filled in. I didn't worry about those because no slimes are gonna be jumping off at the very top. Um, the next issue we have is other mobs spawning and taking up the mob cap. So usually what I like to do is if I have access to a world download, um, I will take that and I'll put it into like a creative mode and then Let's go ahead and write down our coordinates here. We're at 7, 39, negative 72. So what I do is I teleport to that coordinate. So 7, 39, negative 72. So we are right here. And then, since no slimes are really spawning, um, that kind of tells me that there are other mobs nearby. And I know there are. So we want to do... Um, what is it? Teleport to, actually, I don't remember it right now. Um, let me look this up and then we can kind of figure out how to find all the mobs that are near us. Okay, so I found it. It wasn't difficult, but it is teleport at E type. We'll start with zombies. Uh, and then R stands for radius equals 100. So if we do that, that's going to search for all zombies uh, around us. And this is going to return too many. Um, so too many targets match selector. And that just means that there is more than one zombie within 100 blocks of us, which totally makes sense. There's a lot of blocks in a 100 block radius. So if we do 10, that probably isn't going to find anything. So we'll just kind of work our way out like that. And that's kind of what I do until I find the zombies. And let's try 50, so that's too many. Let's try 30 eventually. So it's between 30 and 35. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky when there's two zombies at the same spot. Uh, there's a whole bunch in here. So we can go ahead and light this one up. Um, I just go through the whole cave, light everything up, kill anything I see along the way, and then I teleport back to uh, the little area. So if we go back, let's say we killed everything, we go up, 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 teleport, and then we're back here. Um, this will kind of always start us back at the center of the farm. So then we can come back, find the other zombies, and repeat that process until we have everything lit up. Um, if you don't have access to a world download or can't use commands like that, 
the only real way is to mine through like everywhere and find all the caves light up all the caves you could probably even slab um, like the rivers and oceans if you're nearby one um, it is a lot of work but that is really kind of the most important thing with the slime farm it's making sure that other things don't take up the mob cap so slimes can always be spawning and sending you slime balls at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I am going to light up everything around me and then we'll come back and we can kind of see how well this farm does I probably didn't explain this correctly uh, before but what I would do is teleport to where the zombies are um, I would write those coordinates down from my test world and then I'd have a big whole list of coordinates that I need to visit in my actual live uh, SMP world and I would go and visit those coordinates make sure I lit everything up in there um, and just make sure no zombies are spawning uh, like for my world in Broke Rock I anytime there's a world download available I will go ahead and search through in my creative world uh, the copy of Broke Rock and then I will visit all the areas where mobs can spawn I'll make sure I write down the coordinates of like all the caves and then I'll light those caves up kill anything along the way and make sure that everything is dead and then yeah once I feel like I've done a good job I'll wait a while wait till there's another uh, world download and then I'll do that process again make sure I didn't miss anything and then go through and light up any other caves that I missed previously so it's a long process um, another option is just to dig out a big perimeter uh, that'll take definitely the longest you'll get a lot of resources that way but yeah again the hardest part about a slime farm is actually making it uh, so only slimes spawn in the area and the mob cap doesn't get reached all right I went ahead and dug out a whole bunch of this so we could see the farm in action I went through and lit up all the caves and as you can see all of the slime are spawning in the slime farm there aren't any mobs other mobs around I've searched uh, kept finding in within a radius of a hundred and I haven't found any which should be plenty uh, if you clear out that area every couple ticks or whatever when the slimes will spawn um, and other mobs the slimes will spawn first and that's just because they're the only mobs that can spawn in the area so we wait here for a little bit and then the slimes will spawn they should maybe around one or two per level at the top levels because of the way the spawning algorithm is set up it starts at the top and then works its way down so we could see one guy up there and there's a couple others so not too many that time um, but that's every I don't know 10 20 seconds a uh, group like that spawns so I just went through and I cleared this out and yeah that's about a stack two stacks on that side and then half a stack on this side they seem to prefer this side we are losing a few to there uh, if you really wanted it to be efficient you could just extend this rail to also go underneath this one um, I may do that and then yeah we'll go ahead and see how many slime balls we get per hour all right let's go take a look I swear I just heard the slime um, it's been about 20 minutes so we can probably figure out about what it would be per hour so it looks like the slime have moved over to the right side instead of the left um, so what is that 64 oh. Let's go into inventory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Times 64 plus 35. That's 611 in 20 minutes. So if we times that by three, 
That is 1,833 slime balls an hour. So, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know what that would be um, for slime blocks, but we could figure that out easily. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go to the outro. Hello, I am Jumika, and today we're going to be building the slime farm behind me. Uh, if you are interested in more tutorials or just watching a Let's Play SMP, uh, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video by searching for a slime farm tutorial, hit that like button to let YouTube or Google or whoever know that they did a good job in helping you find this video. Uh, this farm in particular gets over 1,800 slime balls per hour. Um, yeah, if you want to see one in the real world, like on a multiplayer server that I play on, uh, the server is called Broke Rock, and I'll link to the episode where you can see me build it and see it in action, and yeah, I'll leave that there. If you'd like your own hosting uh, for a multiplayer server, be sure to check out my website, servers.jomica.co. That link is also in the description. You can get uh, the server there for pretty cheap, and I run it myself, so you can always talk to me, and yeah, I'll help you out with that. So yeah, for this farm, uh, the supplies you're going to need are all in here. You need two minecart with hoppers, two repeaters, two comparators, two hoppers, four chests, two redstone torches. You're also going to need some magma blocks, glowstone, or um, sea lanterns. You could also use jack-o'-lanterns. They're a little bit harder to place. Uh, you'll also need some snow blocks and jack-o'-lanterns for the snow golems that are in the walls there. Um, I think you can just use carved pumpkins as well. And then you're gonna need some cobblestone walls. These are the actual numbers you'll need in here. Um, but yeah, let's not waste any more time and we'll go ahead and get into the building of this farm. All right, well, I hope this tutorial helped. Slime farms aren't that hard. They're just very time consuming with all the digging and caving and all that stuff. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you'd like more tutorials in the future. If you have any questions about the farm or anything in general, uh, feel free to ask in the comments or you can reach out to me on Discord. I do have a server. That information is in the description. I respond to all comments and messages. Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you all next time.